artists from every tribe in the country are assembling at Wayo Matatini near Ruatoria, headquarters of Ngati Poro, to take part in the tangi for a distinguished Maori leader, statesman and scholar, Sir Apirana Ngata. <laughs> To pay their last respects to their former colleague, whose body now lies on the veranda of the meeting house, watched over by his widow and other mourning women relatives, come the official party, led by the Prime Minister, Mr. Holland, and the Minister of Maori Affairs, Mr. Corbett. As they approach the marae, the challenger goes out to meet them, but they come in friendship, and the challenge is not accepted. Prime Minister and Mr. Corbett unveil a bronze bust of Sir Aparana Ngata, which was presented by a grateful government, and it is accepted on behalf of his people by his brother, Mr. Horne Ngata. After the service conducted by the Bishop of Waiapu and the Bishop of Aotearoa, Maori cloaks, ancestral heirlooms and tributes from his own and other tribes are removed from the coffin by Sir Aparana's youngest son, Enaringata, and the funeral procession moves off to the burial ground on a hill above Sir Aparana's ancestral marae. Sir Aparana Ngata devoted his life to the advancement of his people, and his body will go to rest in their midst, in sight of the land he loved so well. Christchurch, winter 1950. In a few months, Canterbury will be a hundred, and Christchurch will be celebrating its centenary. A fountain in High Street commemorates the planning of the Christchurch streets 99 years ago. And now, for the celebrations to come, there's planning of a different kind. In the Centennial Office, the organiser and secretary are checking the final designs for posters, booklets, programmes and medallions. Several times a week, committees are in session planning the various activities which will take place continuously for 12 months of celebration. One of the most colourful events will be the centennial procession through the streets of Christchurch, and already some of Canterbury's first cars are being tickled up for the parade. Built in 1905 and still going strong. For something a little faster, English Park is being repaved. And here, many of the world's champion cyclists will be competing in the Centennial Games, which take place in January 1951. And out of town at Kerr's Reach, the Avon is having its course changed in the interest of sport. A straight 2,000-metre all-weather rowing course is being cut, and crews from most empire countries and the United States will be competing here in a regatta to be held as part of the Centennial Games. The new channel will continue across country to the poplars in the distance, and will cut off a big loop of the Avon. Before the new riverbed is dug, bulldozers go to work removing willow trees which were planted in the pioneer days. The city's new Olympic swimming pool, covered to protect the tiles from the frost, is also nearing completion and will be ready for the Games. A modernistic 10-metre diving tower adds something new to the Christchurch skyline. On the other side of the city, in Rickerton Bush, workmen are restoring Dean's Cottage, one of Canterbury's first homes built by William and John Deans in 1844. 
It will be on show during the centennial, and on the other side, it still looks much as it did when the Deans lived there 106 years ago. The early pioneers made good provision for education, and in 1850, Christ's College was founded and developed along the lines of an English public school. This year, Christ's College celebrates its centenary, and pupils are busy planting roses, which will be in bloom for the celebrations. Much of the historical research connected with the centennial has been in the hands of the Canterbury Museum, and one of their displays will be a replica of a pioneer home. The 1850 model fireplace is being rebuilt by an English immigrant whose cottage in England was fitted with one exactly the same. Methods of heating and cooking are different here now, but cooking utensils are much the same. This pioneer's pressure cooker, price five and sixpence, was designed in 1681 and known then as a digester and is basically the same as many models on the market today. These housewives of 1850 were made at the museum and the costumes are genuine period pieces. Russell Clark, the well-known New Zealand artist, is at work with others on a model of Littleton Harbour. The port hills are made from layers of wallboard and in the harbour are scale models of the Charlotte Jane, Randolph, Cressy and Sir George Seymour, which reached Littleton in December 1850 with 779 passengers. In the century since these ships arrived, Christchurch has grown into a modern city and now stands ready to celebrate her 100th birthday. When the summer comes, her streets will be thronged with visitors joining with the people of Canterbury in celebrating 100 years of progress.